What is going on everyone? It's Captain Taylor and today we're out here and we're gonna be fishing these bridges. That's the I-10 bridge right there. Hopefully we can get on some redfish, sheephead, something out here, maybe some trout. We got shrimp, we got fiddler crabs, it's going down. And we're using some live shrimp. That's what we're gonna do. And we're just gonna get in here, drop it right down inside those pylons. We make sure our drag is tight so if anything hits, we can pull them out hopefully. If it's too big, obviously it's gonna get us. Oh, I got something, look at that. Perfect bait fish. Oh, it's a little white trout. Check it out, baby white trout. We're not keeping them. I don't feel like dealing with them. Then we're gonna drop down some for some sheephead. This pole. So when you're dealing with these little fiddler crabs, they do have pinchers, and some of them have one big claw. So what I like to do is I just grab it and close their big claw, and then they can't really do much after that. And then what I do is I take them, a little bird's of prey jig, and I hook it through the shell, through the leg, out the back of the shell. Just like that. See if there's anything down here. Set back on the boat. Still got them, yeah. Tighten my drag up. We're gonna move to the next bridge or some different pylons. We'll be right back. We were fishing that bridge over there, so now we're gonna fish these bridges. So I'm dropping Javi off up there. He's gonna fish this one. We're gonna work our way around a bunch. We're gonna try to cover some ground today so we can get some dinner. Just gonna hold myself here really quick. That's why it's nice to have these little 14 foot skiffs. I can do pretty much anything a kayak can do. It's not as quiet, but. Oh, had him for a second, hold on. Hold on, he's right down there. That was my first pick of the year, guys, by a sheephead. I'm about 90% positive that's what that was. So we're gonna get two more of them on there really quick. Want a little feist in them. All right, let's get them down there. So I just got picked off right here. Let's try it again. Stuck on something? Oh no, I'm, I'm on a fish. Got him out of the pylon. That's what that's the job right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Bobby! Woohoo! Got him. Oh my camera. And my camera's getting smashed over there. Fat sheep head. Fat, fat sheep head. Dinner is served, son. I smashed my third person camera. But I got him. <laughs> All right, let's get my third person fixed really quick. Yes, sir. First sheep head of the year. Check it out. Beautiful fatty guys. So this is, is the first sheep head on the channel. Look at those teeth. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Great, great tasting fish. All they eat really is crustacean. So let's get a measurement on this guy. He's sitting about at 20 inches. Check him out. Yes, sir. That's, that's one dinner right there. One of my subscribers asked me to start doing a little breakdown on like what kind of gear I'm using. So I decided I would do that. For my first thing we're using is, we start off with a TP1 Speed Spin Loose 400 on a TP1 Speed Stick Loose. It's a medium light and we have a little one ounce egg weight on there with a little bead. The bead makes sure the swivel that's right there doesn't get engulfed by the egg weight. We're using a about two foot leader with a tiny little J hook. Now we were throwing shrimp on this pole and it wasn't doing the trick. So we switched over to my Shimano Stratic 3000 on a Shimano Talavera. It has a birds of prey jig on there with about a foot, uh, yeah, about a foot and a half liter of fluorocarbon. That way the fish don't see what we're throwing. We use 
fluorocarbon. Now the reason for using this fluorocarbon is because I use braid on most of my poles because it's stronger, but the fluorocarbon makes where the fish see the actual bait at invisible. If you put this stuff in water, it just disappears, especially after about five foot, you cannot see it. So I love to use fluorocarbon. You can use 20 or 15 pound, depending on what you want to use out there for these fish. But 15, just know you'll probably get broke off more, but 20 gives you a little more strength, but a little more visibility, which is kind of bad. So it's really an option choice up to you guys. Try them both, see what works better for you. The sheep patty have to be 12 inches to keep. And he's 20, so he's definitely a keeper. So we're gonna drop down a few more in that same little hole we picked him out of. Through the arm, out the back of the shell. Same with these, if they're small, definitely throw on too. These sheep head, they hang right up on the pylons because they eat all the barnacles, oysters, and everything off the side of this. So that's why you're able to catch them so close to these pylons. Like We're using that drag really tight. That way they can't muscle and break us off. If I don't feel any more pecs or anything, I'll either move to the other side of this one or I'll move to the exact next one. And you can just keep popping down these. And if you spend a couple hours out here, you, there's a good chance you'll catch your limit or at least enough that y'all are going for for dinner about one out of here first sheep out of the year super excited about that and i haven't got a bite since so we're gonna go to the next one so i like to pick it up and move it around every once in a while kind of gets it noticed a little more hopefully now sheep head are some fun fishing because they're super strong they taste amazing and they usually are pretty thick when they actually come and it's not really winter time yet so they're not fully here but we're getting them here already, which is awesome to see. I just need a few more. All right, well, we're not picking any out of this one. We're gonna move to the next one again. I'm gonna try right here though. I've seen like three in here already. He's still there, ready? See if he's there. Try dropping right on the back of that. That's all I'm saying. You gotta get like right, you know how to fish with sheep head. You gotta get right on the pylon. Oh. Oh yeah, here we go. Get the net, get the net. Yes, yeah, sir. Come on, get him, he's right there. Fatty too. Hold on. He's coming, he's coming up, he's coming up. There he is. Woo! Put him in a the boat, there we go. Fatty, dude, fatty Magoo. Two sheep heads, thank you. Show the camera, his back cam, check him out. <laughs> fatty, guys, that's a fatty. We're sitting at about 20 inches as well. Hold on. Just All right, we're gonna put him in the cooler. <laughs> All right, so we're at the last spot. Hopefully we can get on something. The sun's setting. We've been out here for a few hours and we caught just those two sheep head today, but two is better than none. So I'm grateful and thankful for it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. We're gonna go home and clean these bad boys and cook them up. All right, you ready? Oh wait. I'm on, I'm on. He's got me stuck on something, but I'm on. Oh, nope, he let it go. Drop back down, drop back down. Got one more fiddler crab going down. I just got picked off right here when I was leaving, so gotta try one more. Huh? Get hit. I didn't feel it, but Oh, yep, he's on. Get the net. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, that's a really good one. That might be a red. That might be a red. Get him. Yes, sir, three. That's dinner. Look at him, that's a fat one. Woo-hoo. 
me show that back camera. Look at that, birds of prey jig, guys. Catching me huge ones out here, guys. Let's see, he's about 22 inches. On that birds of prey jig. Check out those mouths, look at those teeth. Here. Yeah, guys, look at that. That is, that is a fatty. Look at how he's up here. Look at those teeth. Fatty. Look at that. That is the lace that we're looking for. It's gonna be delicious. Right. The cool. I don't want to leave, but man, we gotta. All right, guys, I think we're gonna have to call it here in just a little bit. Like, I've been saying that for like 25 minutes. You getting packs? Oh, Javi's on. Real, 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 real. Oh, pull him backwards. Yeah, get him out of there. Get him out of the structure. You're on a red or something. Hold on, I'm coming. Don't muscle him too much, you'll break him. You're on a red, don't worry. I'm, I'm coming. This one I said it was over, guys. This one I that Loosen your drag a little bit so you don't break them. All right, this is good. Go ahead. Not yet, that's We got him off. Oh my god. Javi might have got a bull red right at the end. I felt something and I was like, the rod in my pole is going the other way. I can't believe he can win. He swam this way. He's so dumb for I that. I was like, no <laughs> He's way. He's so dumb. Javi got one right at the end of the day. Look at the sun I setting. I thought I was about to lose him because. Dude, it's a bull. Oh my god. Javi hasn't got one all day, guys. This is all a day. all day we've been out here. And now he's got a nice one on. I gotta keep him on camera. Don't muscle him too much, you're gonna break him off. Just let him run if he has to. Honestly, I would probably let him. Let me see. Let him run a little more. Just so he doesn't break you off, you know it? Yeah. Let him tie her out. No that's what I'm saying, there's no structure. Step forward a little bit so I can get you on. Oh, that's beautiful. Sun setting on you. Last fish, guys. Javi didn't catch one all day. He watched me catch three sheephead. And he caught, I caught that little trout. And now he's hooked on to what we think is either a bull red or a big black drum. Yeah, I Lord. We're going we're gonna to troll you over there a little bit, catch him up with him. Don't muscle them too much. We got nothing but bay in here. Woohoo! I think you got a big black, you got a big bull red or a big black drum. Yeah. Don't break them. Don't break them. If anything, let them swim. Because <laughs> you got plenty of line, you got plenty of space. There's no structure anywhere around. Look how far away he's gotten us from that pile line we caught him on. Yeah. It's been a while since you landed a bull red, huh? Yeah, a while. A while, while. Don't, like, don't pull it like that. You'll pull the hook. Just, it's okay. He's strong. Just let him run. He'll get tired. <laughs> it might be a stingray. Because I was laying flat, kind of. But I don't know how it ran, it might be a bull. Yeah. I'm gonna turn you, don't worry. Oh, here it comes. Oh, it's a it's shark. Like no, it's, oh yeah, it is a big black drum. It looked like a shark for a split it's second. Really, I've seen him spin out of the wonder. All right, I gotta net this fish for him, guys, so. Don't muscle him, just, just he's. Yeah, go ahead, reel, reel. Oh, fatty of a black drum. There you go, bud. Oh yeah. Get in the net. Look at his eye. He's got a remora on him. He's got a few remoras on him. He's got some more marks on him. Look at his eye. All right, let's let's unnet him. All right, ready to get him out? Yeah. Where's the, let's get the fish grips and stuff so we can get your phone picture ready. I know you want one. Yeah. I don't want to get him out the water too long. 
Oh, that is a beast, guys. That oh, is a fish for a few more I got him. Yep. Hold the pole still. You got it? Yep, I still got it. Oh, there's a remora, guys, right there on him. We're going to kick him back in the water. Holy crap, this thing's a beast. <laughs> Hear that tail smack? <laughs> Put that pole away. Yep. All right, here we go. Let's get a measurement on this guy. All right, from, here we go, hold him. Yep. All right, Javi might have the all right, so my chest cam died. Check him out. He's over 35 inches. That's a beast. Look at that. Monster. Yep. All right. <laughs> what is going on, everyone? Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the fishing video. We we did a pretty good day. I mean, my brother didn't catch anything to that last thing that you just saw, and that was a 42-inch black drum. Unfortunately, my GoPro SD card memory was full, so we had to film that little last bit on my brother's phone. We're back at the house. We're gonna do the cleaning on these guys and then we're gonna get to the cooking at my mom's house tonight. Guy, we're gonna be using a Man of War Fishing Company. I bought this at the Seafood Festival here in Pensacola. Now this thing, I've really so far, I love the profile, it looks great. But I check this out. This is one of the coolest aspects. It has a knife sharpener in the butt of the knife. So far cleaning things with this has been really great. It's a super sharp knife and it stays sharp. All right, so we start by going right into that head meat, cut into that. Then I like to use move that little, some of their flakes out the way. Just start working that knife down that spine. Now you can feel there's a bone right here. You can feel it. You just run it down that whole spine. Then what I do is, I come back in, I angle the knife down and at an angle, and I run it on the meat. You can feel it running on the bone. Get all that meat off of there. Just open them up. Run it on the bone. Run it all the way through. Pop that off. Now I like to turn mine. So sheep head, you can't see them, but right here, their, their rib bones are really, really hard. So I take a serrated knife and I just slice those with a serrated knife. Right here, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it, but I'm gonna show you. I take that serrated knife. Usually I'll lay them on the board normally, but I wanna show the camera angle a little better. So I just cut through those rib bones with that serrated knife. Open them up. All right. Now we're through all his rib bones that are right there. We used that serrated knife to do it. All right, now we just get into the meat there. Now you see what I'm talking about? Those rib bones are so strong. So if you take that serrated knife and you just saw it, we we'll get right through it. And there we are. We got him filleted up. Now, if you don't want to deal with the rib bones, you can just cut around them, but they do have meat in there. So if people want that meat, they have to take all these rib bones out. It's up to you. It's an option thing. So now what I do is I cut down first to get to where the skin and these, the scales are. And then I angle my knife at an angle down and work it forward. Try to keep your knife bent as flat as it can with the with the cutting board. I have a bigger knife in there, I should have grabbed it. Oh. Pull that off. Now you got nice fillet right there, guys. Now we can use little pliers to pull these bones out. You can cut the bones out, whatever you want to do. Just wash the meat and ready to cook. So we're at my mom's house. We gotta cut this fish up and get it in the oven. We're gonna show you what we're doing. We're gonna cut them into little pieces just like that. Cut them into pieces about that big. Probably about three inches by two inches. Almost like chicken strips. 
Now, we're gonna cook these in the oven and it's gonna be a, a great method that we've never tried. We actually did it last time, only on one piece because we wanted to try it, so it's gonna be really good. Will Farrell would be so proud of us. <laughs> or I should say Ricky Bobby. So we're gonna cook this a new way that we've only tried once. We want it like fried and breaded kind of, but we don't like fried food that much. So what we're gonna do is shake and bake, baby. Yes, sir. Ricky Bobby style. <laughs> All right. We got the Parmesan crusted shake and bake. Simple method right here. Pour the delicious goodies in there. All right, I'm gonna fill a piece in. And do a little bit of shake and bake. <laughs> shake and bake. We're just gonna load them up all the way down in both of these Pyrex bowls that have melted butter in them. Yeah, right. Give me the mic. I'm about to send it out here to admit it now. I'm hitting him trout. I'm slaying. If you ain't a fisherman, then you don't know what I'm saying. I live in the bay. I play in the surf. The sea is my turf. Located <laughs> offshore. Search Google Earth. The Googans are cursed for veteran fish heads. They get stressed from fish stuff. Running in brooks. Run to fish beds. I'ma cook some fish eggs. Try this rope. A fish taco. I'm stocked like a Chinese stove. Quality check. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Beautiful little look at that. Beautiful. Look how white sheep head is. It's super reflective because of how white it is. Mm. She's gonna try our first piece. Better than chicken. <laughs> Better than chicken. Javi's gonna try a piece. He helped catch it. At least he was there. Yeah. It tastes just like crab. Right. That's what I think. It tastes a lot like crab. Amazing. So we're here first by the little piece of fish. Mmm. This is so good. So if you ever had like crab or shrimp, all they really eat is crab. So that's kind of what it tastes like and it tastes amazing. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're going to take a little bit of Philadelphia's whipped cream cheese. I'm going to spread that on the taco. Gonna shred up the taco meat. Ooh. Gonna put a little bit of cheese on it. A little bit of tiger sauce. Coleslaw. And my girlfriend puts coleslaw on it, but we're not gonna do that because that's gross. It's the best. All right. Yeah. Now we're gonna bite out of our. Freshly caught sheep head. First of the year. All right guys, so we're gonna get to eating. It's kind of late. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next adventure. For life, for life, I'm living it. Really out here getting it. On the ocean, owning it. I am not just renting it. I am on the water more than seagulls and pelicans. Got salt water running through my skeleton.